Hello. In this video, we'll be going over the setup and running of our VR application. So after you download the zip folder and extract it, you'll see these folder contents, documentation, simulation folder, screenshots, and some dependencies, and then a readme. So we'll go ahead and click on the readme first. And here it's saying to go to this VS redistributable and .NET folder. And inside here, uh, VC redistributable, the first one is required for our VR application. And the second one, Windows desktop runtime, is the .NET runtime which we use for our VR uh, GUI configurator. So most likely both of these will have to be installed. And then the second thing in the readme folder is telling us to go to download the Leap Motion SDK. So on the Leap Motion website under tracking software download, you can see the latest download for uh, Windows. So downloading that and installing it. Uh, will be required to use our application. So after that has been done, uh, it might be a good idea to go to look at the documentation. So there's some explanation on firewall. Uh, our application uses uh, different versions of TCP and UDP, uh, depending on the usage. Uh, in some cases, it can be networked. Uh, it also has the ability to use Wi-Fi-based controllers. And then in the future, maybe to get status updates, it might use the network. And then hardware configuration. So the hardware configuration depends on if you're on a desktop or laptop. Uh, how many GPUs you have, or if you're using VR. So on a desktop, in our case, the most typical configuration that we use is one GPU for VR and one GPU for rendering. So this it's a system with two GPUs. Uh, it also works on a single GPU system. In that case, you would do both rendering and computation on one GPU. And that's very similar to the case when you use it on a laptop. So on a laptop, you use the dedicated GPU for both compute and rendering. And then it's highly recommended to use an external display and not the laptop display. Uh, this is because with laptops, the internal display for the laptop is directly connected to the integrated graphics. And if you're rendering VR on the dedicated GPU, it has to do an extra copy to the integrated graphics to the laptop screen, which creates a bottleneck. Whereas if you use an external display, it could go directly from the discrete GPU or dedicated GPU uh, to HDMI or DisplayPort. However, the external display is connected, removing the bottleneck. And then, so on the left side, this is our VR simulation configurator, which can be used to set the parameters prior to launching the VR application. And once you run the VR application, this graphics hardware configuration pop-up will appear. And it will show you the adapters found on your system right here. And then it'll show you which GPU is connected to a display. Uh, this works well for desktop. It may or may not work for a laptop. And then it also shows you the configuration that has been set by this VR simulation configurator on the left. So here in purple, I've circled uh, the location where you configure how to set up the simulation and rendering for your GPU hardware. 
And in this case, I have two GPUs. So I've specified GPU zero for rendering and GPU one for compute. And now we can go back to the documentation. There's also uh, folders for keyboard commands, leap motion troubleshooting, which uh, this is likely important. So I go through the steps here, but right now I can show it to you live. So uh, make sure that the ultra leap motion software is running in the background. So you'll see this like little green kind of check mark like icon. If you right click that, you can say open control panel. And then you'll get a view of what the leap motion device camera can see. And you want to make sure that uh, your camera view is right side up. So if it's upside down, you can switch it between normal and inverted to correct this. Uh, if the image is upside down, it, the leap motion tracking will not work as expected. And if you're on a desktop and the leap motion is just on your table, you might have to experiment with which orientation is best. And then there's a folder for simulation coloring and some other general usage notes. So now we can go to the simulation folder. So in this folder, you'll see two different executables. One that has a green dot, which is uh, simulation input. So this is our VR simulation configurator. So here you can set most of the parameters prior to launching the simulation, as well as save your maybe favorite parameter configuration for future use. So there's a primary tab, which is where you can find the hardware configuration and the typical parameters that are adjusted. There's a coloring tab, which controls kind of the minimum and maximum bounds of coloring and also the force arrow sizes. And then there's a VR object uh, tab our simulation still uses a text file based configuration for PDB files. So we've made this uh, GUI based method to kind of help teach how to use that. And then there's a tab for extended models. Uh, currently this just has our explicit hydrogen bond uh, parameters. And then there's an advanced tab. So whether you're using our custom VR controller, uh, there's controller monitoring, open VR monitoring, uh, primarily for debugging, so unlikely for you to use this. And then there's screen text, which you should keep on, uh, live statistics. Uh, this is still in testing, so maybe not so useful as of yet. And then out of any of these tabs, you can also go through and cycle through kind of pre-saved configurations. So if you find a configuration that you like, in this advanced tab, you can uh, type a new name right here and click save, and it will save the current configuration as defined under the name that you specify. And Anytime you make a change, it's advisable to click the Save button. So now we can go and launch the VR simulation application. Uh, initially, we'll use it in desktop mode. So initially, when you launch it, you'll see the graphics hardware configuration that I mentioned previously. Uh, here you can see that adapter zero is for the VR and rendering and adapter one is for compute. Go ahead and click OK. And then when you first launch our application, it's likely that you'll see a Windows security alert. This is because our software uses network-based technologies. So in the case of our VR controller, it's connected via Wi-Fi. 
Uh, our simulation also supports a client and server mode, as well as a cloud-based simulation mode. And then it may also connect to the internet to give you notifications about when you should update or when you should check for updates. It's up to you. You can select private or public. Uh, it just depends on how your network is configured. If you're unsure and you're not too worried, it's okay to check both, but maybe it's advisable to just check whichever is applicable to the network you're currently on or that you plan to use our VR simulation on. So I'll go ahead and click Allow Access. So after you launch the VR application and it comes up, you'll see our pause screen. So here you can see many of the commonly used keyboard shortcuts, uh, such as screenshot, uh, pause and unpause, M for menu change, N for hide solution, uh, Y for reset the simulation, and then W, A, S, and D for directional movement of the camera, in W for forward, S for back, A and D for left and right, and then also Q and E can move vertically up and down. And then if you want to move more slowly, you can hold the control key, or if you want to move uh, faster, you can hold shift while pressing one of these movement keys. And then for the mouse, the left button is for re-angling the camera. And then the right button is for interacting with the particles when you're in desktop mode. And then if you are grabbing a particle, you can move it around with the mouse. Uh, and that is on kind of the 2D projection that you can see by the camera. But if you want to move it forward and back, you can use the mouse wheel. And then over on the right hand side is our custom VR controller and some of the uh, buttons and actions that it can take. And then on the bottom, you'll see uh, the common simulation coloring, the coloring for the nucleotide, and then NA and CL's color. So now we'll hit P to unpause and we'll see the simulation start. So now holding the control key, I'll try to move slowly. So I can go backwards, forwards, left, right, down, and up. And then with the left mouse button, I can look around the scene. And with the right mouse button, I can click on an atom and kind of, in this case, shake the DNA. Also, when I have an atom selected, in the bottom left hand of the screen, you can see that I've selected a phosphorus and it's currently a part of the DNA and it's the T nucleotide. Uh, 